My name is David Siddons and I'm president of the David Siddons Group. And my name is Kalini Carvalho, I'm the vice president of the Sales Waldo Fossoya Residence Miami. And this video answers the question, will this be the most luxurious building for Miami's urban core? So, Greeny, take it away. Tell me what makes this, obviously, you know, this incredible brand name, new building, we're seeing with a model behind us. What makes this luxury? Yes, Property Market Group, which is the developer, definitely uh, always try to improve themselves. And this one, they had a dream to make 100 floors. So basically, this tower is considered the tallest towers of the South of Manhattan and provides unforgettable and, and undescribable uh, views. Where How high is it? How high is the building? 1,049 feet. 1,049 feet. So I'm just going to fire back and forth with some of these questions. How does that relate to everything around? I mean, how far mm. above are you to every other building around you? Yes, basically after cube six, which is 60 floor, we are surrounding complete and obstructive views in the 360 degrees. So you see not just east or north or south or west, you see entirely round. Without blocking the view completely. Okay. And, and all. But when it becomes cube eight, which is the 80 floor, is where it becomes extremely unique because there is not any other residence above 80 floor that provides view on 85, 86, 87, 90. Those views are unique. So there is not one building that provides views in that level, of that level of a height. That's a crazy high. I mean, our audience know I've been analyzing all the different condos in Miami. One of the things that we've always had a challenge with is the walkability. And in certain parts of the beach where we have a lot of typical, very luxurious buildings, there is structure around you, but there's not a lot of structure. There's not a lot of choice of restaurants and shops. And downtown and Brickell being the most densely populated part of Miami, not just with people, but with also retail. The desire to live in that kind of Manhattan-esque environment on the ocean in a you know, beautiful warm climate without high taxes draws people to look at Brickell and downtown. And up until this point, we haven't had a lot of luxury choice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the first ones I'm going to mention, which I can do because I'm impartial, I'm a third party. I don't work for the developer. I work for myself um, and for the pleasure of the audience who are watching this. Um, we have Four Seasons, we have a thousand museum yes. and we have the other building coming up, uh, Aston Martin. Yes. I think that this is really the conversation that why will you come to Waldorf Astoria? What transcends this above the rest of the crowd, those rest of those luxury buildings, mm. definitely height. I mean, there's nothing this high. Yes, there's nothing this high. And the location is absolutely great because uh, we are located very nearby the I-395 and the I-95. So the flux of the traffic is really good. Besides, I want to point it out that this is the second largest, biggest financial district after New York, it is, yeah. which is the business uh, network is incredible in this area and is growing tremendously in downtown, the residential section, because it's coming a lot of new projects right now in this yeah. area. Yeah, if you go a little too north beyond where we are, one of the things I've, I've found is that Edgewater, and as you go further into that downtown area, there's less retail, there's less kind of options for you in terms of walkability. Here, you're still kind of on that cusp. If you go right on the cusp between Brickell and downtown, traffic does really get snarled up. When the bridge goes up, I, I've experienced it myself. I've sat in it. Um, again, you know, call me and I'll give you the first-hand experience of what I go through every day sometimes. Is it, it gets harder to get in and out. And the nice thing here um, is that you do have multiple ways to get in and out of downtown and Brickell. It's nice to be in the center. Sometimes you need to get out. Um, and then it comes into, you know, you talk about these floor plans. Yes. Because like if you watch my other videos and please at the bottom of the screen, you know, we're going to give you some of the links to the best lines and the best buildings in each respective neighborhood. It is a line by line conversation. It's all too easy to just talk about buildings and talk about neighborhoods. But that's not the reality. When you do buy real estate, you have to get granular. You call an expert, someone like myself, who understands all these different lines in all these different buildings to appreciate why certain lines in buildings will just supersede everything else. So take us through 
these, again, they're called cubes, these cubes and how they vary so much and what you can experience as, as per luxury, like how many square feet are we talking about? What kind of views are you getting? Are they through flow? Are they front facing or back facing? Kind of give me some of the, the variables here. First to start, I, will, I wanna be clear that this is not a condo hotel. This is a project that has been developed since back six years ago when the developer bought this land, completely focused on a first, second home. And it came in the right time and the developer knows that. So um, we have a separate completed the hotel section for the residential. We have a privacy for the residential section on the pool, on a beach club, on a kids club and a lobby and a valet is completely separate. So we have the first cube as a lobby of the hotel and residential separate. We have a restaurant five stars. That's called cube one. Cube two, you have a mix of amenities and the suite, 100 suites for the hotel Waldorf Astoria. You have a cube three, which you also have another 100 suites and another mix of amenities. And then the residential section is started the 42nd floor, right above the private pool for the residential. And the 42nd all the way to the 89th floor is the regular units. The beauty of this project, in my opinion, is when it comes to the four plants per cube, it becomes very unique because if me, Karini, is buying a southeast corner on a 60th floor, I don't have anybody competing with me, but only eight, another eight property owners on a, on a, on a resale market. Mm -hmm. That holds value because yeah. first you look in the water and second, you don't have a lot of offer on the market today. Because when somebody loves the project, loves the building, they want that one as an option and they're gonna value that four plan. The four plans here are very spacious because of the height of the... How big are we talking? Give us some quite yes. quick fire yeah. you know, uh, square let's, footages. Let's go straight to the point for one bedroom is between 800 to 1,100 square feet. Two bedrooms, uh, 1,400 to 2,400 square feet of two bedrooms. That's big for a two bedroom. Yes. That's bigger than anything else I think I've seen. Most of the two bedrooms I've seen in Brico have been maybe a thousand square feet or so. So that's a different dynamic. Mm -hmm. It's and more the, of a living. And then you come to the three bedrooms is between 2,400 as well to 3,500. And the four bedrooms, it is on a 3,500 to 4,200 square feet. Our balconies is enclosed balconies because they need to block the speed of the wind. And because of that, we don't have all of those super big, big balconies. Our balconies average is between 200 to 400 square feet. But the space inside is where the developers focus more yeah. when you have more space inside. That's it's actually important to understand that when you're in the urban core, when you go out to the beach, you know, we talk about terraces a lot and big terraces. And when you're on lower floors, it's great. But candidly, when you go really high up and you get to a really, really tall building, Firstly, you kind of get a sense of vertigo if you're over, you know, over a, a, a terrace. But ultimately, the wind does pick up. And I think that functionality on having a big terrace on a high floor makes absolutely zero sense because mm -hmm. you can't really use it. It's all about the interior living space. The exterior experiences when you're in the common areas and down below. Same thing for Four Seasons in Brickell. They have exactly the same scenario going on. High floors, it's, it's small terraces. Primary residents are who's really moving in right now. The buyers who are really coming to us, and I'm sure if you're watching this, you're most likely probably watching from the Northeast or somewhere um, else in the, in the country. The primary residents have to be bigger. They have to be bigger, more spacious, bigger closets, bigger, you know, just living areas, something that you can use for your family. Um, so you've got 3,500 to 4,200 square feet for those four bedrooms, which is a good size, mm -hmm. comparable to anything else that you're gonna see in the market. It's very typically around 4,000 square feet for a good four bedroom at luxury level. But I like talking about penthouses because penthouses are cool. Yes. And we all love a penthouse. And <laughs> uh, we're gonna feature some of those on the picture. Take us, talk us about like mm. the trophy, the penthouses for a second. Well, the, the penthouse is uh, where the buyers is the king of this building, basically. You know, they're on the 90th floor and above. 90th floor? Yes, 90, 91, 92, 93, and 95. That's Really which hot. is we already have a, 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 the buyer for the, the last one, but we still have another four available. And it is a size that can be a 6,300 square feet or 13,000 square feet, which wow. the buyer is pampered here. He sit down with the architect 
and he draw exactly how he wants his unit. This is a custom house in the sky. With so potential of a pool in the back. 13,000 square feet interior. Yes, interior. Wow. Amazing. Okay, that's huge. And he can choose any finish that he wants, basically. Okay, we so can him. completely customize and cut it. And what are the ceiling heights here? What are we talking about? 14. 14 on, on the penthouse. The penthouses. And the normal sure. levels come down to 10. 10. Okay, so 10 is still a good height. If you look, some buildings are nine and you feel it. But 10 is still a good amount of you know ceiling height. And it's very comparable to other buildings that you'll see on Miami Beach. Let's get into numbers because let's face it, we want to talk about numbers. I love the it. numbers we're talking, and, and this is the thing, we're going to flash up on the screen as um, you may or may not know, um, I'm a co-creator for a software called Condo Geeks, and Condo Geeks is essentially a 15-year economic horizon of the entire Miami condo market. So I can do what obviously in-house and, and sales team have a tough time being allowed to do, which is I can talk about every other building and all the numbers and see how it stacks up. So give us the dollar per square foot, then we're going to flash up on the screen how this stacks up against the other key buildings in its class. Okay, the average of the building is 1,400. Uh, square feet. Uh, Dollars per square feet. Yes, okay. exactly. With many types of finish that we can mention uh, later on. Um, and the cube eight is more unique. So we are talking about $2,200 per square feet and the penthouses are $3,000 per square feet, which is not bad at all because we have a recently a resales in Apogee, which is a little bit higher than $3,000 a square feet. So I like to mention yeah. that. <laughs> well, I just sold for the audience. Uh, it's good to know we actually just uh, did a contract for a unit over $4,000 a square foot, which is actually a record. For, thank you very much for my um, And that wasn't a penthouse. That was not a penthouse. So I think it's important to know. And there was a penthouse, I believe, that actually traded now for 4,400 a square feet, which I believe was in Arte, if I, my memory serves me correctly, but don't quote me on that. Um, but so these numbers are not outrageous. Right. This is a pre-construction, David. So we know that it's important to mention that this is a, not even launched the project yet. Uh, so the developer is definitely is being uh, conservative on his price. So he can attract the buyer right now because it's an important moment before the groundbreaking. So that's right. We are in a pre-launch when the prices started at the beginning. And we are touching the water and see, so we are not so aggressive on prices because of that. But once you see the quality of the finish here, uh, you're gonna see that it's become even more better and better. That's why we are calling a lot of attentions and a lot of people are supporting us because a lot of things make sense in this building. It, from the location, from the brand, and from the finish as well, and prices and view. Perfect. So when you come into this and we're looking at, you know, we're watching this video, whether you're seeing it, you know, the moment that we launch this and we are very early on into this process or you're watching it further down the line and you may watch it months from the time that, you know, the building's actually launched or even groundbreaking has happened. Mm -hmm. um, give us a sense of the timelines. When are we talking about completion of this project? Okay, so the developer is planning to groundbreaking the first quarter 2022. Okay. So he told us uh, four years after he would deliver the keys. Okay, so it's a while before this is going to be done. But I think if you're looking at this now and you're looking further down the line, if you look at historically when you look at pre-construction projects i think it's fair to say developers need critical mass to get off the ground they need to get things going they need to be aggressive they need to be motivating the buyers out there in the market Correct. so they come in with a dollar per square foot which typically is going to be the best deals mm -hmm. when you're halfway through the project that's when you've got critical mass prices go up and then sometimes right at the end when they're trying to close out you might get a few deals too but True. It's, you know, typically speaking, it's right at the beginning to get in there. And our job is to try to give you as much information so you can gain confidence. So the Waldorf Story obviously is a brand name that everyone recognizes. Yes. The developer, again, will flash up information at the bottom of the screen to see their historical projects that they've done, their pedigree. Um, next, it just remains for us to say thank you. Thank you. And uh, we're now going to kind of tour through the project, mm -hmm. discuss a little bit more queen has been a great friend my for pleasure. many, many years. We enjoyed doing this. Thank you so much for my doing pleasure. it once again. And any other questions, as always, shoot me an email, give me a call, watch the rest of our other videos online, and uh, stay tuned for another video soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you.